Hi everyone and welcome to the Deployment Research YouTube channel. My name is Johan Avitmark and in this video you will learn how to install RESTPS for OS deployment, RESTful endpoints written completely in PowerShell. That means of course demo time. So first of all, why do we need this? During bare-metal deployment or any type of imaging, it's often that you need to look up other information or contact other systems. For example, reach out to the main controller to move a computer from one of you to another. It could be looking up OS deployment details out of a SQL database. It could be reaching out into Config Manager to add a machine to a collection. It could be reaching out to, say, Entra ID or Intune or Windows Autopilot. And while it's technically possible to do a lot of that in scripts that you run directly in WinPE, from a code point of view and from a security point of view, it's way more effective and more secure to run that code on the server side. So what I'm going to show you in this video is how we can run a PowerShell script in WinPE that calls a component on the server side up here that runs a second PowerShell script that actually does the heavy lifting. So that means that we have code running here or a service running here. The client is requesting something and that code on the server side, that PowerShell script, is reaching out to whatever resource it needs to do. And that means I can store credentials up on the server side without having to store them on the WinP side of things. So let me show you how this is being configured. So over here, I have a very simple infrastructure. I have a domain controller running DNS and DHCP as well. I have a server running, in this case a deployment server, and I have a Windows 10 client. On this server, I'm going to install RESTPS. Let me go to that server. RESTPS is just a PowerShell module, so you install it like any other PowerShell module. A few lines of code. Perfect, I'm going to import the module, throwing in a verbose, I will see the functions while I'm doing that. And we're going to run the actual installer that will set up the platform on this machine. So, that's the entire installation. Now, in order for a client to call a script that runs on the server, you need to have something that receives that information. Behind the scenes, if I open up the install folder and open up the JSON file that is here, this one is listing the various method on the server side and which script they run when you call a specific method. So if I have a Windows 10 client here asking for the process method on the server side, this script is going to run. And that could be a script that does anything. SQL, AD, Entra, whatever. This, in this case, it just gets some processes. So, if I head over to a PowerShell prompt, and then another PowerShell prompt, I'm going to start the listener in this one here. So I have developed or put together a small script that starts up the listener. Simple like this. So I'm going to run that one. Now it's running, and then I can go to the other window and I can call a script that calls that specific method using an invoke rest method command or commandlet. So if I run that script, this is gonna fail. Why do you think it fails? Well, if I go back to my JSON file, the default folder for all these methods is on the C drive, but I install it on the E drive instead. So I simply need to change that to an E and go back here again and run the same command. And now it will tell me the processes that are PowerShell running on this server, but I'm doing it from a client 
over to a listener that runs the second script, grabs the information to me and send it back. Now, more interesting, of course, is doing this from a client. So if I go over to my Windows 10 machine over here, where I have a very similar script, the only difference here is that instead of specifying local host, I'm specifying the remote server running the listener. So if I open up a PowerShell prompt here and run that script, this too is going to fail, but for a different reason. This one failed because of firewall. I did not open up the port for the listener on that machine. So what I have to do is go over to my server again, open up the firewall, and add in a rule, an inbound rule, it's going to be a port, it's going to be 8080, that was the port I had defined, I'm going to allow it, I'm going to call it RESTPS, because in my start script, this was the port I decided to use. So now, if I go back to my client, clear the screen, run the same script again, now it works. So I have a client-side script calling another script on the server that gets some information, return it back to the client. Now, you can make it much more advanced than this. For example, the default setup is to use HTTP. What if you wanted to use HTTPS? Super simple. Over here on my blog, Deployment Research, if you search for RESTPS, here I have a little guide on how to put together a script for launching the RESTPS using HTTPS rather than HTTP, assuming you do have a, a service certificate that you can use. That can either be a full-blown PKI or it could be a self-signed cert that you create. Worth noting, this platform, you find additional information on Justin's GitHub project. This is where you can download RESTPS and all of that stuff. And like the Amazon link, I will share this one below. But other than that, this is what you need to get it going. On my blog, I have a few other examples. For example, how to use this to access the MDT database. So this is a SQL database having deployment information. So when I deploy a client here, it will talk to SQL, but it will do it through the web service. The web service does the call, gets the data back, and send it back to the client. So quite elegant solution. And the price for this one is just right. It's free, it's open source, it's perfect. Now, however, I launched that REST PS listener from a PowerShell window. What happens when I log out from that server? Well, obviously that listener is going to die and my deployments are going to break. I will show you. Go back to the server. And I'm going to go ahead and log out. I'm going to go to my test client. I'm going to try to run the same script again. And it failed because the listener is not running. What I want to do is to run it as a service. And that's fairly simple to do. So let me log into the machine again. And I will show you a PowerShell script. This one here. This script will download a service manager called NSSM, the non sucky service manager. It's open source, it's available here. And this script simply downloads it, expands it, and copy it to a folder. So if I run this, it will download that service manager. If I check in program files now, I have the file right there. And then the lines down here is how you launch it as a service or make it configure 
this script that I used earlier in the PowerShell prompt to launch as a service. So if I run these commands here, check my services, I now have REST PS running as a service. I can go ahead and log out from this machine. Go back to my test client. Try to run the code again. And this time it worked. Single PowerShell process this time around since everything else is closed on the server. But beautiful solution. Have a client side script calling a server side script that does something. This is how we get it to work. That's all I had for today. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again here on the channel sometimes in the future. Have a great rest of your day. Bye for now.